Semester number two, lesson number 29. Our aim today is how did the Cold War lead to domestic paranoia? And as we look at today's lesson, all right, we need to understand the term domestic paranoia. There was a fear after World War II of communism and everything that communism was associated with, all right? If you remember back to after or during World War I when the Russian Revolution happened about 1918, 1919, there was the Red Scare, this fear of communism. And the reason communism was so feared was, was really two-pronged. First of all, the idea of communism was that it was a worldwide revolution, and they wanted to spread this communist revolution all over the world. So America was afraid you know, that it was going to spread over to the United States. The second was this would challenge and really change what is the longest-standing constitutional democracy in the world, which is the United States, right? If you have uh, a communist regime... It is much different, and if you guys recall from last year, um, most communist, well, actually all communist, re all communist regimes have a dictator, and really that's going to challenge the American way of life, which is a constitutional democracy. Paranoia is is really, you know, this idea of a really serious fear of something, and being paranoid and thinking that, you know, around every corner is is this 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 communism trying to creep up on American society and change the way in which we live. So there's three points we're going to really talk about um, today. Um, it's very important that you guys copy this and listen to this over the weekend because, you know, in class we're going to watch a, a clip and, and really this is stuff that's going to be uh, talked about in the clip. So the three things we're going to talk about are the fear of communist influence, the spy cases that stun the nation, and McCarthyism. Point number one, the fear of communist influence, all right? After World War II, uh, I'm sorry, before World War II, uh, if you guys recall, and, and like I said at the beginning, uh, 1918, 1919, you have the Russian Revolution, and the, you have the beginnings of the fear of communism um, spreading from the Soviet Union to the United States. And after World War II, it got even more serious. Um, after World War II, they create the House of Un-American Activities Committee, or HUAC, uh, this was formed to look into communist activity and to ensure that communist activity was not, um, you know, moving into the United States. And they also made all government employees do what's called the loyalty program. It was a committee to, basically, it was conducting security checks on government employees and getting all their records and making sure they had never done anything suspicious of any sort. This is really the beginning of, of of what now we call today is Big Brother, right? Where they're really looking into everything in your life and they're monitoring and surveilling every, everything in your life to ensure that you are who you say you are. Something to keep in mind that we will talk about, um, why do you believe there was such a serious fear of communism in the United States following World War II? And, and explain your answer. And, and the second one really is going to play off what we're, the, the clip we're going to watch in a few minutes. Do you believe the average American truly believed communism was evil? Or do you believe they were just following the crowd? Explain. And this is going to play into our idea of the mob mentality, all right, which is a psychological um, you know, belief that people follow the mob. People are afraid to be different. People are afraid to be the outcast. So they follow whatever is popular belief. And during the 1950s, the popular belief was that communism was evil. And if you were not following these anti-communist beliefs, you were yourself a communist, and therefore were evil. And we'll get back to that in a few minutes. There are a few spy cases that um, you know stun the nation and make make the parent bring the paranoia to another level. The Alger Hiss case. Alger Hiss was um, a government worker. Um, he was found basically being a spy. Uh, this led people to fear that there were communists in the government. All right, they found. Um, they found documents of his um, hidden that he was going to bring back to the Soviets, apparently. And also the Rosenbergs, who uh, there's a picture of them on the right. They were a husband and wife. Um, they were activists in the American Communist Party. And they were found guilty of espionage, and they were sentenced to death, and both of them were executed. Um, the evidence against them was not concrete. So some people argue that they were wrongfully charged, all right? Point number three, um, 
and probably the most important point for today's lesson is McCarthyism. All right, uh, McCarthyism was is a term that denotes uh, that gets its name from Senator Joseph McCarthy, who was the junior senator, meaning the less experienced senator from Wisconsin, who went on a witch hunt for communists in America. All right, if any of you guys have ever had, uh, read The Crucible by Arthur Miller. Uh, it's about a witch hunt, and it really it portrays what Joseph McCarthy did um, during this time period. Joseph McCarthy, um, he was a bit of a nutcase, and he claimed to have a list of government employees who were communists. No one ever saw that list. He charged that the army was full of communists, and he, um, you know, he really just went on an irresponsible accusation tirade where he started saying everyone in the government was communist. And for a while, especially early on, people were behind him. People were behind him because they were afraid that if they were against him, he would call them a communist and they would be you know, subject to attacks because of it. Um, after a while, people started to realize that McCarthy was not, you know, he had no knowledge of these things and that he was really just you know, off his rocker. Uh, Congress denounced him as a member in 1954, and when McCarthy, um, you know, starts to fall from grace in the 1950s, this is the end of the Red Scare. Paranoia starts to fall a little bit in the United States, but when we're talking about the early to mid-1950s, you have a real height of, re uh, of paranoia, or the Red Scare, the second Red Scare, where people are afraid of communism. Here are a few pictures. Uh, of Joseph McCarthy, all right? And right here is a news clip that I would like you to watch in your own time. Um, it is a news, oh, I'm sorry. It is a news clip um, where he is being interviewed by Edward, or actually he's responding to something by Edward R. Murrow, uh, a famous um, journalist of the time. And there's a few talking points I want to keep in mind. How was McCarthy able to exploit the fear of communism? in order to gain power and notoriety. McCarthy used communism as a way to move into power. How was he able to do this? All right. And after watching the clip of, uh, of the interview, what are your thoughts on Joseph McCarthy? More importantly, do you feel that his words are credible or valid? Explain using examples from the video and our discussion. Now, you don't have to watch the entire clip, but I ask you to please watch a little bit of it to see what kind of person he was and how irresponsible he was in just randomly attacking people who he had no credible evidence on. And that's the real big thing to focus on here is he had no credible evidence on any of these people. He just felt that by attacking some of them, he'd get supporters, and that's the mob mentality. And for a while, it worked. Which leads us to what we're going to watch at the beginning of class, which is The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. Uh, it's, a, it's a Twilight Zone episode, if you guys have ever heard of The Twilight Zone. Uh, it's a really great episode dealing with this mob mentality, and it definitely has, all right, uh, it was the, the creator of this show, is a guy named Rod Serling, and it definitely has anti-communism hysteria packed into this show. So I want you to make the connections. And as we watch it, keep in mind the following questions. All right, who are these quote-unquote monsters? Explain. What is the concept of a mob mentality, and how does it apply to communism and the anti-communism hysteria of the 1950s? And explain. And which character would you most closely associate with Senator McCarthy, and why? So be prepared to answer those questions as we watch this. We will watch this one in class meaning the one before it, the one on Joseph McCarthy, I would like you to watch at home, all right? This is really, it's a great episode. Uh, it's 25 minutes, and uh, hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. Our check for understanding. Which would be the most appropriate entry for line D in the list below? So if we look at this, what we're looking for is the um, the, the bullet point that, that, that is missing from this um, this outline, all right? And the Roman numeral is the Cold War at Home. And underneath this, we have A, the McCarthy hearings, B, the Alger Hiss case, C, the House Un-American Activities Committee, all right, and D. And your choices are labor unrest, 
Two, racial segregation. Three, wage and price control. Or four, loyalty oaths. All right. And which one of these four do you fit? Do you think fit within the Cold War at home? All right. And we will discuss that answer tomorrow. Uh, have a good night.